Uh, welcome to uh, lecture 4 of module 1. Uh, in this module, we will uh, try to understand the concept of uh, determinate and indeterminate structure. Uh, specifically, what we will do is, uh, uh, in the last class, we discussed the concept of static equilibrium. Uh, we will give some more applications of static equilibrium. Uh, and then through these application, through these application, we'll try to understand that uh, what is determinate and what is indeterminate structures. Okay, uh, you see. Uh, let us quickly uh, revise what we have discussed in the last class. Uh, what is equilibrium? We said that equilibrium is when uh, when any in, in any structure or any object uh, is subjected to some external load and then object as a reaction to this ex external load, some internal force is generated in that object. And we say that object is in equilibrium when this external load and internal load they balance each other. And this equilibrium can be represented by uh, represented through some equation which is called equation of static equilibrium. And this equation says in three dimension that summation of forces in each direction is equal to 0 and summation of moment about any axis is equal to 0. And the two dimension, these equations become summation of forces in x and y direction is equal to 0 and summation of moment about z axis is equal to 0. Okay. Uh, before we uh, before we start giving some more uh, application of equilibrium equations and uh, then determinate indeterminate structure, uh, let us let us see some concept of uh, uh, concept of what are the properties that these equations should satisfy. If you remember your uh, engineering maths course. Uh, you see, uh, these are the equations, right? So, if you remember, uh, in the, in the in, 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 towards the beginning of this module, we said that uh, any physical system uh, needs to be translated uh, through some uh, equation that could be algebraic equation, differential equation, or integral equation. And then, once those equations are obtained, representing the physical process, we need to solve those equations, right? Now, in this case, in the present context, those equations are equilibrium equations. So, these equilibrium equations essentially a representation of a physical process, right. Now, at the end, we will see that all these, most of these uh, uh, equation, most of this uh, equation can be translated uh, into a system of a linear equation like this. Okay. Now, then the problem. Uh, of understanding a physical process is reduced to a problem of solving a system of linear equation. The linear because uh, uh, in this in this course we assume the structure behavior is linear. The relation between force and displacements are li linear. Uh, we'll understand the linearity uh, in a more better way as we as we go through this journey. Uh, now, in order to have a unique solution of this equation. Now, what is this? The solution of this equation actually gives you the uh, gives you the understanding of the physical process, right? Now, this equation needs to satisfy certain property so that we can have the solution in a unique way. And the property is that these equations should be independent. These linear equations should be independent. Uh, by independent means that none of the equations can be derived from others just to uh, to to for a better understanding of this uh, this line let let us give you some example let's have three uh, three equations okay and you have three variable x y z suppose this equation you obtain from equilibrium now you see this equation can be represented to represent in a matrix form like this if you look at this equation closely they are not linearly independent because you see the third equation can be derived from this two. For instance, if you if you if you if you take this and then add two times of this equation, you get this equation. So, these equations are not linearly independent. So, if the equations are not linearly independent, then what happens? You cannot have an unique solution of the system. Right. For instance, in this in this system, all these equations, these these uh, the all these three these three equations are satisfied with these values of z and so on. You can have infinite many values of this combination which can satisfy these equation. So you cannot have an unique solution. Just to, to for better understanding, suppose I want to I want to locate a 
point in a three dimensional space. So, what information do I need? I need the position uh, along x axis, position along y axis and position along z axis. Now, if I give you position along x and y axis, then you cannot uniquely determine, uh, determine the point. You see, when I say that x coordinate of a point is this, y coordinate of a point is this or z coordinate of a point is this, means I am giving you some new information in the form of coordinate any in any particular direction and give you some information about the location of the point and with that information you can uniquely locate that point. Similarly, all these equations, all these equation give some information about this variable. Now, this information should come from independent sources and if they do not come from independent sources, then the equation become dependent and you cannot solve those equations. Now, in that case what we say is the system is not uh, determinate or in the other way system is indeterminate. Now, we will see the similar thing in the context of structure, structural mechanics, but before that let us let us see some example of application of equilibrium equations. Okay. Now, uh, let us take one cantilever beam uh, which is subjected to a concentrated load uh, at, at point C. What we need is we need to determine the reactions at the support A. So, the first step is to draw the free body diagram of the entire structure. We discussed how to draw free body diagram. Uh, first, the, the object needs to be free, uh, needs to be made free from the support and then the support should be represented from their equivalent forces. Now, you see this is the free body diagram of the entire of the beam A B. Now, uh, since this is fixed support, uh, characteristic of fixed support is it has horizontal uh, just constraining and horizontal motion, vertical motion and then rotation. So, equivalently you have horizontal reaction, vertical reaction and the moment. Now, you see now you apply the equilibrium equation here. Now, applying the static equilibrium equation, the first equation is summation of forces in x direction is equal to 0. Now, only component of force you have in x direction is A x. So, naturally this condition gives you A x is equal to 0. Now, next equilibrium equation is summation of force along y direction is equal to 0. Now, along y direction what are the forces you have? You have A y and then P. Now, you see this is our sign convention. When we, when we subtract moment or subtract forces or add forces, add moment, this is the sign convention we use vertical force and horizontal force in this direction are positive and clockwise moments is taken as negative. But please the we will discuss in the next class when we talk about bending moment and shear force of beam, we will discuss another sign convention, but as far as algebraic manipulation, algebraic calculation is concerned, algebraic operations are concerned, this is our sign convention. You are free to use any, any sign convention, but whatever sign convention you use, please be consistent. Uh, with that, but throughout the study, throughout this course, what we'll do is we'll use this sign convention. Now, if we if we if we write the equilibrium equation is in in y y direction for summation of forces in y direction. So, a y which is upward uh, according to our sign convention is positive, then p downward vertically downward it is negative according to our sign convention. A y minus p is equal to zero. It directly gives you a y is equal to p. Now use the third equilibrium equation which says that moment about any axis any point uh, moment, moment at any point uh, is equal to 0 summation of moment at any point is equal to 0. So, take moment at point A. So, summation of moment at point A is equal to 0. So, what you have is uh, A x and A y will not contribute to this moment because it is taking uh, it is taking about we are taking this moment about point A and A x and A y they pass through point A. So, what are the moments you have? The M A itself moment at uh, A and the moment due to force P. Now, moment at A is in clockwise direction, it is positive and uh, then moment of P will be P into A. Again, this is in clockwise direction, so this is positive. So, this is your, this is the third equilibrium equation which directly tells you M A is equal to minus P and these are three equal, these are three um, uh, support uh, reactions. Now, you see all these equations, all these equations they give you some information about the system. The first equation tells you uh, uh, that A x is equal to 0, second equation tells you how the reaction the, um, 
vertical reaction is and the third equation tells you how the moment is. Now, these equations may be coupled, may be decoupled, but these equations need to be linearly independent. In this case, we have seen that these equations are independent means these equations give you some new information and those information will help you to uh, find out the unknown. Let us take uh, the similar example once again, uh, but uh, apply one prop at point B. So, it is now a propped cantilever beam. So, at point A you have fixed support and point B the roller support. Uh, in the previous case when there was no roller support at point B your number of reactions were horizontal reactions at A, vertical reactions at A and moment at A. But now how many reactions we have? 3 reactions at A and additional one vertical reaction at B. Then let us see what happens if we apply, if we try to find out this reaction using equilibrium equations. Okay. Now, first draw the free body diagram of the system. Now, this will be the free body diagram of the system. Uh, the vertical roller support, the characteristic of roller support is it provides constant turning in any particular direction, any particular translation. So, this is B y reaction at B and A x A y and M A are the reactions at A. Now, first equation is summation of forces in x z direction is equal to 0. So, naturally only component of force you have in A x is A x. So, A x is equal to 0. Then uh, next equation is summation of forces uh, in y direction is equal to 0. Now, what are the forces we have y direction A y reaction at A, then B y reaction at B and then external load P at C. So, A y and B y are vertically upward as per our sign convention this is positive and P is vertically downward. So, it is negative. So, uh, this, this summation of F y is equal to 0 leads to another equation A y plus B is equal to P mean total reaction support reaction should balance the external uh, load P vertical vertical direction. Now, the next equilibrium equation is moment at A is equal to 0. Now, moment at A is equal to 0 what are the moments uh, you can have the moment A uh, itself and then clockwise moment due to P and then anti clockwise moment due to B. So, M A which is clockwise that is why positive and B A B Y into A plus B which is anti clockwise negative and then P Y uh, P into A which is again clockwise that is why positive. So, this is the equation you have um, uh, when you take summation of moment A is equal to 0. Now, you see uh, how many unknown you have here uh, we have we have uh, a x is equal to 0 anyway it is determined. So, we do not need to determine once again A x equal to 0. A is A y is unknown, then B y is unknown and then A m a is unknown. Now, in order to, so we have 3 equations, the 3 unknowns right. Now, how many equations we have? Equation 1 we will not consider because equation 1 directly give you horizontal force is equal to 0. Now, only we have equation 2 and equation 3. Now, how many unknown we have? We have, un, we have 3 unknowns. So, you see the number of equations are now less as compared to the number of unknown. Uh, now, you may say that uh, fine, then we can take uh, like we have taken moment uh, at A is equal to 0, we take moment uh, about moment at B is equal to 0, which give you another unknown, another equation and those equation and that equation can be used to solve 3 unknown. Let us see if I take moment at B is equal to 0, uh, that gives me uh, an independent equation or not. Okay. Uh, you see, uh, let us take moment B is equal to 0 and if we take moment at B is equal to 0, what are the forces will contribute to this moment? Uh, M A moment at A itself, then anti clockwise moment due to P and then clockwise moment due to A Y. So, you have moment A which is in clockwise direction, then due to force A Y which is A Y into A plus B again clockwise direction positive and then moment due to P. Uh, anti clockwise anti -clock, anti clockwise direction p into b which is minus p is equal to 0 now this is additional equation but really these are the, the is this equation is independent from this equation and this equation let's see now you see ay from this from equation 2 we know ay plus by is equal to p which gives me ay is equal to p minus by if i substitute ay here p minus by what equation we get is this which is very similar to equation 3. 
So, even if you take moment at b is equal to 0 that eventually will give you equation 3. So, essentially this equation is combination of equation 2 and 3. So, this is not an independent equation. Now, therefore, in this at least in this problem what we have seen is the number of unknown uh, is more than the number of equations. Why number of here the number of unknown only unknown is the support reaction we will as we pro as, as we progress we will see that uh, there are there may be different unknowns unknowns in the form of uh, member forces uh, and but in this case unknown is only uh, support reaction. Now, here the number of unknown support reactions are more than uh, the number of equation. Why the number of unknown support number of support reactions are more? Because you see the cantilever beam itself the, the support itself enough to provide stability to the structure, but in addition to that we provided one additional we provided this additional roller support which may not be required as far as the stability of the structure is concerned right. Now, what we have done here is we have provided one more constraint to the structure and therefore, that we need to in order to we do not have a sufficient uh, equation to determine those constraint. This kind of structure is called indeterminate structure. Now, um, let us see one more example. Now, before that let us see in the same structure uh, we provide one internal hinge here. Okay, let us see what happens if we provide internal hinge. Now, again draw the free body diagram of this part A D and then free body diagram of this part B D. Now, what would be the free body diagram of this part? This support uh, will be represented by these three forces and then this since this is hinge we know that hinge cannot uh, cannot provide any any resistance uh, to rotation. If you remember the, ex the, the this we showed that if this is hinge uh, if this is hinge then this can free to rotate right this free to rotate, but uh, this if you take if you take a cantilever beam like this this in this cantilever beam this is the fixed support and this is stable right. Now, this was our first example. The second example was we provided one uh, additional support here. The structure is still stable, uh, but because of this additional uh, roller support here, the structure become uh, indeterminate. Now, this example is is this. You have you it is a fixed support. It is a fixed support here, and then you provide one hinge. Now, another roller support here. Okay, so this is the structure here. Now, what we do now is we decompose the structure. What we divide the structure into two parts. One is this part, and another one is this this part. And their connection between these two parts is hinge. Okay, and which cannot resist any, cannot provide any um, resistance against rotation. You see, now, mm, so since this the, the, this cannot give any resistance to rotation. There will be no moment here. That is the characteristic of uh, hinge support or um, pin support. Now, what this is the free body diagram for this part, and similarly the free body diagram of this part is this. Now, one thing please note that when we uh, when the free body diagram of AD is drawn, the vertical forces and the horizontal forces are shown in this direction ok. And when but the same joint D uh, when it belongs to part D B the horizontal force and vertical forces they are shown in opposite direction. The reason because when they are joined when if when, when we join them at point D they should satisfy equilibrium and in order to satisfy the equilibrium these two force they should be equal and opposite and these two forces should be equal and opposite. So, that at the hinge support there will be no net force right. So, please be careful when you when you draw a free body diagram especially uh, especially which especially those which contain um, hinges. Now, uh, next is apply the uh, equilibrium condition the um, first equilibrium you see the moment at d is equal moment at d and moment at d is equal to 0 you need not 
uh, you do not have to show them, but just for the demonstration I am showing it here, but when you do the calculation you do not have to show m d uh, as it is 0 in the free body diagram. Now, let us apply the uh, uh, equilibrium conditions f x summation of f x is equal to 0 and which gives you a x is equal to 0 as uh, the previous example. So, I am not writing it explicitly here. So, summation of f y is equal to 0, summation of f y is equal to 0 means what it gives uh, that uh, uh, a y plus b y that should be equal to uh, the applied load p, it is the same example same uh, equation uh, as the previous example. Okay. And you take summation of m a is equal to 0 and this equation is again um, similar, if you take summation of uh, if you take moment about a what are the forces which contribute to the moment uh, the force p which uh, p into a which is clockwise direction and uh, force and the moment due to b which is an anti clockwise direction and uh, now you see uh, what happens um, now, but we have seen in the previous example that these two equation cannot give you uh, cannot give you uh, sufficient information. So, that all these m a all these unknown a y b y and m a can be determined right. This should be uh, uh, this should be instead of b by 2 it should be b here. Okay. Now, next you see, uh, so we need additional equation, because we have 3 unknown and 2 equation. Now, you see what where we get the additional equation, additional equation can be obtained by this hinges. What condition we know at this hinges that uh, at this point m d is equal to 0, right, because that is the characteristic of hinge support. Now, if we take m d is equal to 0, then free body from the free body diagram of this, if you take moment about d is equal to 0, which gives you b, uh, b into b y is equal to 0, b y is equal to 0. Now, substitute this b y in this equation, you get a y is equal to p, again substitute b y is equal to 0 in this equation, you get m a is equal to minus p a. So, this is the solution of this equation. Now, what happens when we provide hinge? When you provide, when a hinge is provided um, in the same propped cantilever beam, essentially then we have one more condition and the con one more condition is at that hinge, your moment is equal to 0 and this condition will give you an additional equation, uh, which will help you to um, solve 3 unknown. Now, the, your equations will be uh, 2 equations that we obtained in the previous example plus 1 more equation uh, obtained uh, by, by enforcing the condition that moment at d is equal to 0. Now, by providing hinge, the structure becomes uh, determinate structure, statically determinate structure, right. Means here, uh, all the unknown we have in this equation that there those unknown can be determined um, from the um, equilibrium equations. Okay. Let us take one more example. Now, uh, this is an arch and this is hinge support and this is also hinge support here. Let us find out the uh, support reactions at A and B. Similarly, uh, draw the first draw the free body diagram. Now, uh, at point A, your since it is hinge support, uh, there will be no moment here, only uh, horizontal and vertical force, vertical reactions at B, horizontal and vertical reactions and uh, this is uniformly distributed load, Q uh, is the intensity of the load, intensity means uh, the unit of Q is, is a force per unit um, length. Okay. Now, um, you see, uh, let us write the equilibrium equation, uh, first equilibrium equation is uh, summation of uh, summation of uh, forces in x direction is equal to 0 and the forces we have in x direction is a x is equal to a x and b x and it gives me a x plus b x is equal to 0, this is equation 1, first equation say. Now, the next equation is again uh, summation of f y is equal to 0, so a y and then b y is equal to 0, a y plus b y is equal to not 0 q l, q l is the total length of the uh, this length of the arch and intensity is q, this is acting downward, so negative and this is acting upward, so positive. So, this is another equation, right. Take summation of m a is equal to 0, m a is equal to 0 
and if you take summation of m a is equal to 0, uh, then what are the forces will contribute? A x and A y will not contribute, B x will not contribute because B x also passes through uh, this point, uh, the line of action of B passes through this point, only component, uh, only reaction component that will contribute to this moment is B y and then external in uniformly distributed load Q. Now, uh, moment due to B will be anti clockwise B y into L, B y into L anti clockwise negative and then moment due to Q will be clockwise and what would be the moment? The total force will be Q into L, Q into L and then since it is uniformly distributed load, uh, their resultant will be at the middle of uh, this entire length. So, total force will be Q L and their resultant will be at a distance L by 2 from support A, L by 2. So, this is the equation we get from m a is equal to 0, this gives you b y is equal to 0. Now, if you sub b y is equal to q l by 2, if you substitute b y here, you get a y is equal to q l. Okay. Now, you could obtain reaction a y and reaction b y, right, but with this we do not have any information about a x, because if you see in this example. Uh, only equation we have is A x plus B x is equal to 0. Even if you take moment about B, you would not get any additional in, uh, equation which can tell you uh, or which can give you some information about A x and B x. Now, this equation is satisfied for any value of A x and B x. So, if you take A y is equal to A y and B y is equal to Q L by 2 and any value of A x and B x which satisfy A x is equal to minus B x, your equilibrium is satisfied. Okay. Now, but, but does that mean that uh, A x and B x can have any value? Actually not, because uh, in addition to the static equilibrium uh, or st equally static equilibrium equation, uh, there is another equation that then another condition that needs to be satisfied is kinematic admissibility. Now, you put a star here, kinematic admissibility we will discuss when we talk about uh, uh, in intermediate structure in a more uh, more detailed way. Now, so this what this equation what this uh, example tells you example tells you that yes we could solve the problem partially we could determine the support reaction some of the support reaction, but in order to get the entire support reaction all the information about the support reaction the equilibrium equations are not uh, sufficient. Now, like the previous example if we put one hinge here. Okay. One hinge here means then we are providing one condition, one what would be the condition? The moment at C will be equal to 0. Now, this is the free body diagram. Now, mm, moment at C will be 0, uh, that is why it is not uh, explicitly uh, shown here. A y is equal to B y is equal to Q L by 2 that we have already obtained and uh, now take M C moment at C is equal to 0 and this gives us an additional equation and from this additional equation uh, uh, you can get A x is equal to this and similarly, since A x is equal to minus B x and so B x is equal to uh, this and um, again this will be uh, this will be A y and this will be B y. Okay. Now, again what uh, what we have done? when we provide an hinge means essentially we are giving additional information. What is that additional information? That moment at that particular hinge is equal to 0 and that additional equation will give you one more that additional condition will give you one more equation which can be used along with other equilibrium equation to um, determine the support reactions. Okay. Now, uh, if I if I have to summarize the entire thing. Um, the statically indeterminate structure is a static equilibrium condition, the structures where static equilibrium conditions alone are insufficient for determining support reactions or internal forces. Right? Now, um, you see, um, now you have two, two, two parameter here, one is the, uh, one is the number of constraint or um, uh, number of unknown in this case the number unknowns are uh, reactions, but as I said number of uh, unknown could be uh, internal forces as well we will see uh, later. 
So, uh, you have number you have number of unknown one parameter and then you have another parameter um, the number of equations. Okay. Now, there are three cases possible when uh, when the number of unknown is equal to number of equation and then another case is number of unknown is more than the number of equation and another case theoretically number of uh, unknown is less than the number of equation. Let us see in all three cases what happens. In the first case is number of unknown is equal to number of equilibrium equation. Uh, for instance, this case uh, this is a simply supported beam one in hinge and another one is roller here two reactions here and one reactions here total three total three reactions and then number of equations we can have is three. So, this, this structure is stable structure. Okay. Now, why it is stable structure what happens uh, when the structure is unstable we will just we'll show you shortly. And the next case is when the number of unknown are more than the number of equations. For instance, here two unknown here and two unknown here uh, two reaction horizontal and vertical two reaction horizontal and vertical total four reactions number of equations available is three. Therefore, this structure is stable, but this structure is indeterminate structure. Uh, here we will see the sum of the constraints are redundant by redundant means the for instance difference between this structure and this structure is the roller support is now replaced by hinge support which pro which was not required uh, if we look at from the stability point of view because uh, when we replace roller support by hinge support then we are giving one more constraint that what is that constraint one more constraint in horizontal direction which is redundant there means which was not necessary from the stability point of view of the structure. Now, let us see the third case third case is when the number of if this hinge support is replaced by roller support. Now, what happens in this case this structure is not stable when it is subjected to uh, horizontal load then it may move like this because roller support cannot provide you horizontal constraint right. So, this structure becomes unstable this is of structures which are determinate and then from 7 to 11 uh, week we will talk about uh, we will see different methods to analyze uh, indeterminate structure. We will discuss uh, the different kinds of indeterminacy, different sources of indeterminacy uh, in a detailed way uh, as we proceed in our journey, but for the time being uh, uh, at least for this week uh, indeterminacy means uh, or indeterminate structure is uh, the number of reactions are uh, more than the number of uh, available equilibrium equations. Okay. And we stop here the next class what we do is next class we will uh, briefly review this concept of shear force and bending moment diagram of beams. Okay. Thank you.